Hello again, and welcome to the next installment of our video tour of Equine Advocates Rescue and Sanctuary. I'm standing in an area of the sanctuary known as After the Finish Line, and that's because we have five adorable thoroughbred geldings in here. Um, four of them raced, one of them is an unraced registered thoroughbred, and they all have their own individual stories about how they got here, although three of them actually came from the same cruelty case, and I'm referring to this guy, this is Arnold, uh, this is Mikey, DA is not in the picture, uh, the horse that's in the stall with Mikey is Joey, who came here last year, and of course I'm being upstaged, but again, I don't mind being upstaged by one of these adorable guys. So, Mikey and Arnold and DA, who we will capture as soon as, soon as we can, um, we rescued them in 2007. Uh, they were discovered um, emaciated and left for dead on the farm of a New York breeder uh, who has since uh, been fined and jailed. Uh, we rescued these horses because they were left out for anybody to take. And when I reported it at the time, uh, nobody did anything to try to help these horses until 2009 when I got a call from Joe Drape at the New York Times who had heard that we took these three horses and wanted to know more about them because it appeared that other horses on this uh, breeder's farm were also dying of starvation and uh, some of them were ending up on their way to slaughter. And so there was a big scandal about it and the New York Times, which did a great job, uh, led to the arrest, conviction, and jail, jailing of this guy. So we have these boys, and uh, probably Mikey was in the worst shape. He was 250 pounds underweight. A DA was very underweight. Arnold had a terrible skin disease. But as you can see, they're all happy and healthy now. And Joey, who's, uh, here he is, Joey. Joey came here, <laughs> Joey came here last fall. Um, a friend of ours in Steuben County found him on a, on a farm, uh, starved nearly to death. And I mean nearly to death. He was a one on the Henneke scale. And I think some of you may already know his story because we did a lot of publicity about him at the time. So he spent almost a week at Cornell and uh, the vet, the examining vet called him a rack of bones. Uh, it was, it was, he was in pretty bad shape, but luckily, uh, he regained his health within a relatively short period of time, and he loves being out here with these other boys. Okay, so here's the horse who's been hiding out. This is DA, and he, as I mentioned before, came here with uh, Mikey and Arnold. We rescued them in 2007, and uh, he's been doing really, really well. DA has some unusual hoof issues. Uh, he was uh, developing abscesses and going lame for no apparent reason. So we had sent him to Cornell, and luckily the, the vets there found that his uh, navicular bone was just in a, in, a, in, a, in a strange angle. He did not have navicular disease. He just had, call it uh, some kind of a birth defect. Yes, Joey. And uh, anyway, he's had corrective shoeing. He's not wearing shoes right now but he's seen regularly by an equine podiatrist and um, whenever he goes a little bit off he, we might put shoes on him but for the most part he does really really well in this field. Uh, he's the only horse in this field who is a registered thoroughbred but he was unraced for whatever reason probably because of that unusual uh, navicular bone that um, prevented him from racing so I'm really glad that we got him Although, had we not rescued him and the other two at the time, they probably would have all died of starvation. This is Monty, and unfortunately, he had to be taken out of the field with the other four boys because he's a little bit under the weather. We're not quite sure what's wrong, but he was in the field the other day just very lethargic and not quite himself. And, you know, it could be anything. It could be a tick-borne disease. It could be an enteritis, it could be any number of things. So we had the vet come, she came out twice actually, and he's now getting fluids intravenously. 
uh, periodically throughout the day. He's been put on antibiotics and a lot of blood was drawn on him so we can try to figure out what's wrong and get a diagnosis so he can actually be treated. But Monty, his racing name was Honor Mountain. I'm not sure, I think he raced at Finger Lakes but then ended up being part of an equine studies program and when um, he was no longer needed, he ended up being consigned for auction. So we moved into action quickly, and it was him and two other thoroughbreds uh, who would have gone to the auction, and we just bought them privately from the school so that they wouldn't end up going to the slaughterhouse. Um, we have these boys uh, since 2010, and uh, they're all really lovely, lovely horses, and we hope that uh, Monty gets better soon so he can rejoin his friends. This is a beautiful field. It's one of the nicest areas on, on the uh, property. I like to call it the room with a view because up here you're sort of up high and then there's this beautiful pasture below and it's just a pleasure to see these boys uh, running around together and taking exercise and doing the things that they love to do best. And you know I was talking about Joey before. Joey wears a cribbing strap. Um, because he is a cribber. Uh, he was in terrible, terrible shape when we got him and it's really wonderful to see him come into his own. This is a horse that won over $253,000 on the track. Uh, his racing career was over when he was seven years old and then somehow he ended up in the wrong hands and uh, was nearly starved to death. So I'm really glad that we have him and I thank my friend Sibylla every day for uh, finding him and telling us about his case. So until next time, thank you.